Welcome to Decades of Horror in the 1970s. Well, it can't be human, can it? It feeds on human flesh. Duh. This is episode 182, recorded February 1st, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. Hello once again, I am your host Doc Rodden and this podcast about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, or not so classic, <laughs> film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week is my co-host Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? Well, I am a person of revolting inhuman tastes, which the tagline says is the definition of a ghoul, so I, mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Boys and ghouls, boils and ghouls. In um, taste. Mm, also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy, and now published author. Did I hear that right? Not yet. No, it, soon, soon. Soon. People soon. probably think oh. I just made this up. When I show, listen, when it's published, and I, you'll see, I'll be holding it in front of me. I'll probably hold it in front of my face <laughs> the be, whole time. be stapled to his forehead. Oh, yeah. A wall of books behind me. I uh, can't wait to see it. <laughs> All right. Holding All right. it like that throughout the podcast. There That's you right. go. There you go. I would. Um, we are here to discuss the 1975 film, The Ghoul. Um, interesting. Interesting pick this week. Uh, it's kind of like hammer light, but it's not, it's not, hammer, yeah. but it's got a lot of hammer people. All right. right. Uh, I guess we just, I don't know. What do we do? Do we just dive into it? No, we're going to, look, we're going to look at the card first. <laughs> uh, the ghoul 1975 directed by Freddie Francis written by Anthony Hines. The cast includes Peter Cushing, John Hurt, holy cow, Alexandra Bastido, Veronica Carlson. Hey. Uh, Gwen Watford, Don Henderson, Ian McCulloch, and Stuart Bevan. Production company is the Tyburn Film Productions LTD. Filming is in Pinewood Studios, UK. Released on June 1st, 1975 in the UK. It was also known as The Thing in the Attic. The Night of the Ghoul, which was on the title I saw it as. Hmm. And uh, Possession Diabolica. Maybe devil's possession, devil is possession. Yeah. Okay. The synopsis is a former priest keeps his crazed cannibalistic son, spoilers, locked in the attic and now fears he will escape to prey upon the uh, <laughs> guest at his English estate during a cross country auto race. That's awkward, awkward synopsis, but it's yeah, uh, it kind of really. kind of gets there in a roundabout way. There, yeah, there wasn't one that, that 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 was. I condensed that, and the longer one was even more off base. Oh yeah. man! Like, well, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but this is fun. Uh, we should look up a little bit about Tyburn and um, somewhere along the line. There's here, not but, a whole lot to look up. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, let's dive into this. Let's find out when we first saw this film and what our first impression was. Who chose this monster? I chose this monster. All right, then, Bill Mulligan, you <laughs> are up. Uh, this, so this was one of those holy grails for a long time because I love Peter Cushing. He's my favorite actor. And this was one of those movies I could never find. They were, I kept seeing the same picture over and over again in, in famous monsters and other monster mags. Which led me to the idea that there's a lot more ghoul in this movie than there really is. The, those those pictures that they had were of the four minutes he's in the movie. Um, and and I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I think I I think I ended up finally breaking down and buying one of those gray market dupes that you used to be able to get at conventions before everything became available everywhere before YouTube. So it wasn't a great copy, and it was what it was. I mean, I enjoy, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for Peter Cushing quite a bit and watching it again. Now I still enjoy it for Peter Cushing. I, I think he gives out a, a fantastic performance. And this is one of those later day Cushing ones after the death of his wife, uh, Helen in 1970 or 71 and everything after that, there's just, he aged noticeably and there's just this overwhelming sadness about him especially since they kept on casting him as guys who have lost their wives 
and it was, it was like it was like torture or something um he's he's really good at, and then veronica carlson who i love but watching it again just the other day um really kind of brought home it doesn't quite come together it's got all the elements that should work i mean it is hammer light it anthony hines freddie francis peter cushing veronica carlson these are all hammer people it's set in england it, it's basically a remake of the reptile really i was thinking that yeah and and but i way like the reptile better um it just doesn't quite come together it takes a little, way too long to get going couldn't care less about these rich snobs in their silly little wacky races uh it's got a good twist people uh, someone dies who i didn't expect was going to die that was a bit of a shock and then you think this is actually a lot like psycho where mm. we have a character that we think is going to be the the main character and then and then a friend or sister or you know someone comes looking for her and the cycle goes over again but not a whole lot happens in the movie it takes a long long time and there's very little ghoul and when he finally shows up in the end a little underwhelming kind of a cool design but a little silly the way they they filmed it and all there's a there's another unexpected kill it just there's a lot of little bits and pieces that work john hurts good he's in it you know some really good acting but for whatever reason it doesn't have that hammer spark and you feel like what what if hammer had made this movie now by by 75 hammer was on their way out so maybe it wouldn't have been any better if they'd done it but even the last few hammer movies just had something more than this one was able to provide but I think it's an interesting film to watch, and uh, I'm glad it's finally available. Although I don't think I don't know if it's ever gotten a really good DVD. I, Jeff would know. Has this gotten a decent DVD release? Uh, I think in England. Hmm. I, so, I, I really didn't check in the U.S., but that's. I wonder about the copyright because it's one of those ones where if you go searching for it, every copy you find will be a different length. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, Tyburn made this, and they made they made an anthology, and they made a werewolf movie that's really really hard to find, also with Peter Cushing, and I've seen that in a terrible. Also directed by Frederick Francis. Oh, really? See, well, we'll, we'll that, talk more about him later, but yeah, but yeah it, it, this I feel like this is what would have happened if Hammer had decided to stick it out and just make movies with a really really low budget, and it's probably just as well they just threw in the towel. Yeah, Tyburn. Um... Uh, only made a few films like he did right in the mid late seventies. Uh, it was formed by Kevin Francis, which is the son of Freddie Francis, which is probably why he directed, I think mm -hmm. most of the films. Mm. Um, but yeah, it seems to, they, they kind of get confused with Amicus that the films are Amicus. Films. I thought, I really did think this was an Amicus yeah. film. Um, and they also, you know, like Tygon is another one hammer course yeah once i realized it wasn't amicus i immediately thought oh it's a tygon film no no like, no no <laughs> it's own thing yeah yeah it's a it's a thing all <laughs> right uh jeff see. sir when did you first see the ghoul uh this past week ah. i really hadn't didn't know anything about it other than i'd seen it in list before uh and the, you know me i got i got in the hunt i watched it it's on tubi uh our favorite place now mm -hmm. and uh it felt a little disjointed so i started looking and imdb lists it as 88 minutes and then there's supposedly an original cut that's 93 minutes that was released on a dvd in the uk and then i found one that was uh 84 minutes or something it's just ridiculous um and i don't think if you look at the stuff that was cut it's nothing it's just yeah. like more time in the party scene and more so anyway um hmm. i got i got lost down that rabbit hole for a little bit uh but it's you know <laughs> it's kind of hard to understand because uh john hurt's character is really far more ghoulish than the ghoul <laughs> <laughs> John Hurt's character is a real ass. He's more ghoulish. He's more ghoulish I, he, even. He does a lot more uh, uh, mayhem. Um, so it's really kind of hard to see. And they did do some nasty stuff. If you put up that uh, uh, 
uh, intro picture doc, the this intro slide. So Peter Cushing is talking about his his character is talking about his dead wife. That picture is a picture of Cushing's dead wife. Oh. I, oh, yeah. So anyway, um, to Bill's point, <laughs> it's like, geez, let's just pound it in this guy. Yeah. Um, and Cushing's good as usual, and he has a very good scene uh, where he's uh, terribly uh, distraught. You know about yeah. You don't see that that often from him. No, he's usually the I'm guy out. who holds it all together. And... Uh, so that's it's in that case, it's good. So yeah, I mean, it's very strange. <laughs> lots of fog. Lots of I I tried watching the ninety minute version that was on YouTube, and I could you could it was one of those ones where you could tell what happened is they they spliced them together because it, it'd be going along with a certain tint to the video and a sound level. And then all of a sudden it would change and be a little fuzzier and a little more yellow and the sound was louder. And then that would go on for about a minute and a half and it switch back to the other again. So I, I just figured somebody found the different pieces and spliced them together. I don't know. That's, that's my story, but uh, I, I'm glad we watched it because it does have some interesting stuff and there's some great renditions of, uh, I think it was the Charleston and the party of the, Oh, yes, yes, that was fun. <laughs> they had that down. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, as usual, I enjoyed uh, uh, Peter Cushing and uh, John Hurt, and, uh, you know, the acting is decent, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very British in that <laughs> respect. <laughs> I, um, so I've, I saw this film some time ago, uh, to be honest. I can't tell you if it was forever ago or – a couple decades ago, I can't really remember when I last saw it, um, but I, I had seen it. It didn't make an impression then. It struggled to make an impression now. Um, this is this is uh, it is definitely uh, it feels it feels more like a TV movie kind of thing. It 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 doesn't have like you said it doesn't have a lot going on, and the structures are weird. Uh, you know, because we follow these two couples, which we lose one couple for a long time, and then we, you know, switch up who we're following. And, uh, and you know, of course, Peter Cushing's at the center of it. It takes a while for him to get introduced. And I'll yeah. be honest with you, until he gets introduced, it, it yeah. was a struggle. Um, but once he's he once he's involved and we get we get the rest of the cast, uh, you know, John Hurt shows up just a little bit before that. And then we also get his uh, his servant which is really weird to say, yeah. but, um, but she's, you know, she's behind a lot of this stuff. Uh, there's a kind of an interesting scene when Peter Cushing exposes what she's doing. Um, but of course we do follow Veronica Carlson for a while. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just, it's not very remarkable, right? It's just an unremarkable film. It's not that it's poorly made or poorly acted or anything or poorly shot even. I mean, everything looks good. I mean, it's fine. It's a fine film. But now, I didn't get to see a very good copy. Um, I watched a Tubi co the Tubi version. It wasn't the best copy in the world. But it, it's also, I, I have no idea if this was always, you know, the the old TV uh, four by, mm -hmm. was it four by what, Bill? Three. Four, four by, by three. three yeah. Or if it was widescreen and they cut it down. I don't know. Uh, that you know, but I, I would imagine like all the Tyburn films are hard to find, so I, yeah. I think they're all kind of lost in whatever licensing problem there is. Um, maybe even the original prints aren't even found, I don't know, it's hard to tell. There's not much out there about this particular company other than you know the mm -hmm. basics I just let you know and, and the films. Um, John Hurt made a couple films with them, by the way, so interesting because John Hurt, of course, not too many years later. Five years later would be uh, four, actually, would, you know, of course, be an alien and all that good stuff. But anyway, um, regardless, I enjoyed it just because it had Peter Cushing, but I didn't enjoy much else. Yeah. I hate saying that because, you know, I love no, my I feel, I feel like there could no. have been a much better movie here with all the parts that they had. Um, but there's not a lot of story here. Well, right. the ghoul, the ghoul is actually not a big part of it. No, 
until until it is and then even then it's just like I, the, the scare the scariest thing about the ghoul is the, the weird feet yeah yeah the the, the, <laughs> the sores well, that's what you see the most of yeah yeah, yeah the ghoul down, makes so. very few appearances uh, it kind of reminds me of of another british movie and i think it might have been called the thing in the basement um where these two old yeah. sisters are keeping their brother you know what i'm talking about no but it, it's like it reminds the thing in the attic reminds the me thing of in the, the yeah the thing yeah. In, i think it was called the thing in the basement and there's this thing that lives in the basement these two old spinsters are are keeping something down there and the whole movie he escapes and kills people and stuff and, and but you know always see it from his point of view you're waiting and waiting to finally see the thing in the basement and spoiler alert when you finally see him the cops shoot him he looks like Howard Hughes in his later years, just an old guy with a long beard and unclipped fingernails. And you're like, what the hell? This is this is a disappointment. Now, this this monster was a bit more ghoulish. It didn't help that when we finally see him, they put that ridiculous green filter on his face. I don't know. Nah, what... That was weird, wasn't it? And that's what gets me. <laughs> Freddie Fan Francis is one of the great cinematographers. Right. But his his movies and I, and and I have to check to see. I guess he probably didn't do the cinematography. They're not really that no. remarkably great looking. You'd think that even if he's just directing and not doing the cinematography, he would just as a point of personal pride make sure that everything is just super top notch, you know, sharp. But no, not so much. But maybe he was just doing his kid a favor. His kid wanted to be a producer and he starts his own company, and so they. Yeah, well, I noticed Dr Roy Dr Ashton in the credits. I don't know about how many other uh, Hammer people there were. Well, at 75, they're all looking for work. So <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Only that is true. Only to be on uh, the last film that they were making in 76. So This was Veronica Carlson's last movie for a long time, too. Yeah, because so. yeah, he directed in 75, he directed this and Legend of the Werewolf, Freddie Francis, mm -hmm. um, for, for Tyburn, so. Uh, everyone's probably fact, thinking the writing's on the wall things are going under peter cushing's wondering if he's ever going to be in a movie that anybody sees again and a couple years later star wars so that answered that question yeah so no kidding the cinematographer john wilcox did the uh legend of the seven golden vampires mm. I, I like the way that one looked a whole lot better yeah but this this kind of reeks of low budget this this and probably looks better than it deserved to for the budget. You've still got that British, you know, the sets and everything look sharp and things are, are pretty cool. But I mean, it, you know, in some ways he's a cool monster. He's he's not. <laughs> he's basically just a really big guy in a diaper with a lot of sores all with over. A, with himself. a diaper in a diaper. Yep. He's got that cool ass knife, though. And that was one of the one of the yeah. few shots that I I remember seeing was the, the, the thing with the blade in the guy's skull. Um, like wow, that is a scary looking knife there. Yeah, I what I remembered most from seeing it before, other than Peter Cushing himself, was John Hurt being in it and mm -hmm. him being so uh slimy, hey, hey. <laughs> for lack of a better Tell word. Me, maybe, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Did we ever actually find out what happened to John Hurt? Last I saw him, he's in he's sinking in quicksand and spilling his guts out to the you know the guy and everything presumably on the promise that if he tells him everything he'll get pulled out but did he get pulled out did he let him sink what happened to him i don't know yeah i think they just sort of dropped him um which, which you know again like you were saying he's kind of worse he's worse than the ghoul the ghoul i don't know something bad happened to that guy and he ended up the way he did but he's just a, a, a bad person and they could have done more with that. They could have, you know, really made us think that, oh, he's the ghoul. It's going to turn out that John Hurd is like digging up graves or something. But I, I didn't really get that sense, you know. Oh, that'd be more fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then it turns out there's a real ghoul. I mean, they, they could have done something, but this just really seems slapped together. Like, Doc, you were right. The first 20 minutes of watching these twits racing, I love Veronica Carlson, but. I was not really all that interested <laughs> in any of the other characters. Could not mm -hmm. care less. Mm -hmm. Well, know. the whole party scene, too, was like mm. something out of a frat movie, you know, or something. Yeah. You yeah. Know, with only people in tuxedos. Yeah, so it, it, 
I mean, it did it, it did it, it did what it needed to do. It introduced two or four leads, and yeah, off we went. We did, we just split them up. We you know, it does a weird thing. It splits them up in two, and we get two leads first, and then the two leads after. Uh, like you said, a la Psycho, which is interesting enough, I suppose. Doesn't really matter for this one. It doesn't hold the it doesn't hold the same gravitas as Psycho did because um, we're not yeah. so focused on her because we're focused on both of them. And um, even even Carlson's death kind of reminded me of Psycho, where we just see the knife and then her mm -hmm. screaming yeah. and everything. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, boy, yeah, this is not Hitchcock here. There was quick <laughs> cuts between the knife and her right. screaming and the the veil around the bed. Surprisingly Getting bloodless, ripped or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean it, it. It did the job. It communicated it, it, what it. you wanted, but yeah. But was, uh, wasn't it way more, of, I was going to say it's uh, way more effective when they do the implied cooking of her flesh and everything, where we don't see anything. But you know, the the Indian woman, played by a white woman, obviously, is is like going over her collection of knives and stuff, and and cutting mm -hmm. into we presume the body. You don't see any of that. Well, that was way more effective because. You know, yep. you, you fill in the blanks with your imagination. Mm -hmm. Imagination. Uh, speaking of Veronica Carlson, uh, she and, and also that picture you're talking about, Jeff, you probably know where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> she said that Freddie Francis made Peter Cushing do multiple takes of that scene yeah. where he's talking to the picture. And um, it caused him, her words, great distress, reduced him and some of the crew to tears. Not cool, Freddie. No. Nah. Got what he wanted, I suppose. It was a pretty now. It would not surprise <laughs> me if it was Cushing himself who suggested putting Helen's picture in there because this isn't the only movie he did that in, and he was sort of famous for using props for for you know coming oh, yeah, up with little true. bits of business that he would use. And I I could easily see that. I mean, it's always been just such a sad story because they were so he was so devoted to her. And when she died from that point on, that's where he like ends his autobiography. And he's like, he was just waiting to die, said he'd be reunited with her. And he lasted another 20 years. I mean, that, which just seems like another terrible punchline to a bad joke here that, um, but you know, it, it, it is hard watching some of those things. Um, the movies in that time. And I mean, this was four or five years after he, she died, but he never got over it. Whenever he has to portray something sad, man, oh, just, just, you feel the weight. You, feel you can weight. feel, yeah. you know, his eyes tearing up, and 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 again, how much he aged. Like in Dracula, AD seventy two, and that was much closer to her actual death. He was supposed to be um, Stephanie Beecham's father, and when he showed up after Helen had died, he was in. He he had aged so much. They said, "Let's make him her grandfather," because yeah, that's what he looked like. Oh, right. yeah, right. yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Uh, the reason why they said it in the 20s, by the way, because you were talking about the Charleston and all that, was because they took advantage of sets built for the Great Gatsby. Oh, um, so smart. There you go. Which were still standing on the Pinewood back lot. It Good also made sense. Yeah, Good it also that. made sense for that because, you know, the whole, and again, they didn't develop this idea enough, but the idea that this is sort of like one of those, um, punishment for British colonialism sort of thing it would is, make a lot yeah. more sense in the 1920s than it would, you know, updated. Um, but I didn't really get that. I mean, the reptile did a great job of that. Well, I didn't get this one at all that really, you know, why. So he, he was a missionary or something. He went off to India. His wife and son got sucked up in some cult. Yes. I guess. The original, the original, uh, uh, synopsis was twice as long as what i put up there and I, I cut a bunch of that out but yeah he's a former priest um acquired his savage taste in india during his father's missionary work and that the woman she's she's doing things in front of a statue of kali right yeah the so there's there's that's part of a connection so it's really rather undeveloped you know they put a bunch of connections right. in there but but no no uh which can work i mean that's fine they don't have to like beat us over the head with all the background but they they left a, a lot <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot that's not explained so so have they been doing this all along that people just go to the house and they get killed and why is cushing so upset 
at at what's happening like he's acting like he's had the kid up there all this time and they've been giving him i don't know lentils or something but he's always had a taste for human flesh but now now it's really you know coming home but that doesn't make sense why does he have this this you know kali cultist there if not to feed him and keep him going and I don't know. There's a, there's a couple of scenes where, where John Hurt spills his guts and explains everything, but it just left me still wondering what's going on here. What's the dealio? Yeah, and then uh, Peter Cushing's character reacts so adversely yeah. to finding her, you know, doing her little rituals behind the curtain. It's like, what did you expect? I know, what were you thinking? <laughs> what do you think's going to happen? Your kid's a ghoul. You keep him upstairs and you let him keep his knife. <laughs> And then you let him keep his knife. And they're like, oh, he's, and the synopsis is he's he keeps him locked upstairs. The hell he does. They open that door all the time. So yeah, he, he opens the door. Food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, and, and I got to say, other than the ugly feet, it's the most non-scary thing I think I've ever seen. It's just so. If he didn't have that knife. I mean, yeah, the knife, the knife is cool. Like, the well, knife is pretty cool. But yeah. Maybe, but it's still, it's just like, oh gosh, they're going up to the top of the steps. Oh my gosh. It's clearly, they don't show up very much, do they? It's so no. well lit. Oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> oh, check out those sounds we're not hearing. Oh, that. Look at yeah, those feet in that sandal. There's, there's a lot of, dirty. yeah, there's a lot of scary things that aren't happening yeah. to make this scary. <laughs> See, I don't, think he's, I don't think he's really cool. We haven't had that very many ghoul movies. Ghouls to me are eaters of the dead not cannibals cannibals are scary sure i mean i wouldn't want to meet one but ghouls are like nasty scary you know they they dig up graves and eat the you know the rotted corpses okay ooh, that's that's really repulsive road killer yeah um, yeah because yeah. right. well you know night of living dead was supposed to be night of the ghouls it does that, well so that's the uh you want to do the tagline stuff yeah uh let's do taglines tagline all right you're not going to do Jeff's or the, the crazy intro, are you? Um, <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, see but, it before it sees you. Okay. It's unspeakably evil. It lives on human flesh. <laughs> It'll haunt your mind and freeze your flesh. Hmm. Twisted tortures of terror. And then apparently they give us a definition. Is that actually a tagline? The whole definition? It is on the uh, uh, DV box. Yeah. Oh, that's DVD hilarious. Box. Well, that they put that up in the uh, beginning of the movie too, right? Uh, ghoul, a person of revolting and human taste, uh, supposed in the East to haunt burial places and feed on the dead. Mm. English, Universal English Dictionary. That's crazy. That's going back to what you're talking about, Bill. Yeah. 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 All right, well, let's take a look at the posters that were made for this. Here, I'll put me down here. So They're pretty cheap. A boink. Yeah. Um, okay. The, now, the it's, it's the bottom one a – was that a theatrical poster? I think or? I think so. It's the, it's the only one I found that looked like it might be a theatrical poster. And mm -hmm. we, we clearly – and both posters, you can tell, we know what we're selling. Peter Cushing and a guy who gets stabbed in the head with a knife. Yeah, yeah. That's That's about it. They didn't put the ghoul up there. I noticed that. Probably well, here's the uh, the uh, box that had the uh, quote on it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, then yeah, there's your ghoul. Yeah. Who who and, looks like he stepped out of Dawn of the Dead a few years early. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not near as green in this yeah. shot. Yeah. No. He grows his, grows his hair back and goes. He looks better without the green Death filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the guy who plays the we should say that the guy who plays the the ghoul Don Henderson um, would later what two years later would appear in Star Wars with Peter Cushing. He would he yeah. who did he play? Peter Cushing, yeah. General Taggy. General Taggy plays Taggy. him. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I I defy anybody to recognize him from this movie. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, oh, no, no, you wouldn't. Not no. at all. No, you wouldn't. Um, all right, Freddie Francis, of course, the director. As, he did uh, some cool things. I mean, I love yeah, Tales from the Crypt. Cool I love Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. And I've grown to appreciate Evil of Frankenstein. I didn't like it the, when I originally saw it, but, I, you know. But he doesn't have the panache of, say, a Terrence Fisher. He's, he's a little bit more workmanlike. 
Um, yeah. I mean, he's he's definitely he definitely crafts a a well thought out storyline of, yeah. of a film, but yeah, there's no flash. There's no. You didn't you didn't put girly mumsy nanny and sunny on there. Or, I didn't. I, I, I missed that. I, right. I missed that podcast. Uh, when we did. Um, the uh, well, and he won Oscars of as best cinematographer for Glory in 1989 and Sons Beautiful. and Lovers 1960. And should have won for the Elephant Man, which is twenty nine just... years apart. Yeah, and the yeah, Elephant Man. Uh, yeah. gorgeous. Uh, you know, he's he's an incredibly talented cinematographer. Um, now he he has directed some films I really really like. In addition to the ones you're talking about, uh, The Skull. Um, okay, I it's weird, and maybe a lot of people you know because of <laughs> the Skull Vision, but uh, I like that. I love <laughs> yeah. Doctor well, Carrie like Moore. Uh, Torture Garden is a lot of fun. It's another anthology. Uh, Dracula's Risen from the Grave. That's fun. You yeah. Did that one. Trog. Someday we're doing Trog. We've got to do Trog. Trog is not a. It's not necessarily a very good film. No, no it's a terrible <laughs> but, film, but it's so fun. Uh, we got to <laughs> do so it. So much fun. We got to do it. But good luck ever finding it. It's one of those movies that just never get shown. Yeah. 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 Ever. The, the Creeping Flesh. Dude. Creeping we Flesh. Yeah, the creeping flesh. Now I like the creeping flesh. Um, I think he did this one. We keep we were talking about a little bit, but craze, which has a really crazy cast, but there's there's really no good hmm. streaming versions that I, we found. Th there is a couple versions out there, but yeah, the quality is very bad. That's the, is that the one with um, Jack Palance? Jack Palance, hmm. yeah. Yeah, Diana Doors, uh, Julie. Is it Eeg? Eeggy? Edgy? Edge. Oh yeah, she's Judith good. Evans, Trevor Howard, Wow, Hugh Griffith, a lot of a lot of uh, excellent. Characters. So I mean, he's he's a man with a great deal of talent, but it, it seems like his best use is behind the camera. Yeah, but he's Literally also made a lot of contributions to the genre. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of films worth watching that he's made in the genre. All right, uh, good gosh, Peter. There's Cushing. the man. What can we say about Peter Cushing? that we haven't said a hundred times over. Um, yeah. You do see that middle picture sure shows off the, the sadness. of. He his, seems like he's in pain yeah. throughout this movie, which of course the character also is, and that makes it work perfectly. It's just that knowing what was going on in his life, it, it, it's, I don't know if it makes it hard to appreciate the movie. Um, because when you, you know, usually when you see characters in a movie, who are in pain they're acting and and he's acting here but we know that's also what's going on it, it definitely gives an edge to it but i think it's the thing that elevates the film way above what it otherwise would be yeah um, but you, you got to think that most people when they saw this or even people now probably don't even realize that's a part of it no no they they don't but you know those of us those of us who are peter cushing fanatics i mean that final picture down there it's, it seems morbid, but that's really what he wanted. He, you know, this, apparently when she died, he spent yeah. the night running up and down the stairs trying to have a heart attack. You know, he mm. just, yeah. But, but he was a very religious man, would not actually, you know, do himself harm to be reunited with her. And I hope that's what happened. Uh, he certainly deserved it, but he lasted a good long time. And at least one good thing with, with Cushing, he lasted long enough to see how loved he was. And, yeah. um, you know, that because wasn't he, he was at the, um, the famous monster. He was, in New York, right? he was, I got his autograph. I shook his hand. He called me dear boy. I mean, the kindness he was so listen, so cool. maybe he was a terrible person and just the greatest actor ever, but I don't think so. I, he just, everyone who worked with him seemed to love him. He got along with everyone. He He's one of those people that when you spoke to him and you're just in a line, you're there for a few seconds with a bunch of people pushing you along to hurry up. But he made you feel like he came to the convention to see you. You know, he, you came away with that feeling. And, and there's there's a few folks I've met doing all these conventions and everything that give you that feeling. And like Doug Jones would be another one. And they're, they're few and far between, but thank goodness the world has them. So... I don't know about uh, 70s. This is, I got I to mix up. I was keeping track in a list. Uh, we did six Peter Cushing movies just in classic era. Hmm. Um, 
all from the fifties and sixties. And there's, there's, I he's one of the greats. He's one of the, and it's, it's interesting too, because, you know, usually when you think of a horror actor, you think of someone who is scary. Um, he didn't usually play bad guy roles. He could, he certainly could. Usually you think of him more of the Van Helsing, but he was also a great Frankenstein. He didn't have to be physically imposing to pull off those things. He just had that intensity. Yeah. Well, I mean, his Frankenstein was the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in the that's for sure. Movies, yeah. In most of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was a different type, right? Yeah. And that was uh, the genius. That was the genius of Hammer to realize you can only do the same monster lumbering around so many times. You know, he's not that interesting, and no one's going to ever beat Karloff. So make Frankenstein the actual Frankenstein, the main character, and that was that was a brilliant move. Yeah, I think the closest thing to an all-out villain that he played was actually Doctor Terror. And Dr. Terror's House of Horror, that's probably the... I you don't think? Know what other bad guys know. is he? I mean, outside of Baron Frankenstein, I mean, what But what else did he play that was... I mean, well, uh, Star Wars, he was pretty villainous. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I guess he was good to say he that. He was villainous yeah. in, that, in that bureaucratic, uh, you know, off to the gas chambers kind of thing. I, he was actually going to play, and I would have loved to have seen this. Gizzy, shut up. Um, he was going to play... <laughs> um, was it Heinrich? I mean, who the one of the Nazi really bad nazi guys oh, oh they were all bad Himmler, he was uh uh, he, uh uh was it Heidenreich goebbels, Heidenreich? goebbels probably would he almost well he was he was the one he, he was going to play the one who got assassinated early in okay, the war okay. and uh he was he was one of the architects of the final solution and everything and he was going to play it. and i can totally see peter cushing wonderful man playing a cold-blooded nazi and just mm -hmm. pulling it off well you he, know? he sort of did that in shock ways he played true yeah yeah, that, I was going to ask about that because I was couldn't remember. But yeah, but he did. He played uh, Henrik Hauser in Son of Hitler. In <laughs> yeah, that's one of the few I don't. I, I've never seen all of it. Um, yeah. I've never. I, I just now found out about it. I didn't even know about it until just now, because um, I always concentrate on his. his There's only a few Peter Cushing movies I haven't seen. I haven't seen Tender Dracula. Um, I haven't seen all of Son of Hitler. There, there's a few out there, and I'm just whittling them down one by one. And all his TV, he, you know, he appeared in TV shows. He was in Space 1999. We probably all remember that picture. And he, he was great as a Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if they've ever, I, I think they've lost most of those, though, that a lot of the Peter Cushing Sherlock Holmes were lost. Yeah. The what one from the last film he made um, as Sherlock Holmes, which was his second to last film in 1984, that's the last Tyburn film. So, Oh, Masks of Death, was it? Yep, yeah, Masks of Death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's and okay. It, Tyburn did not have a lot of money. Nope, you could nope. you can see that. You know, Again, you compare, they're trying to be Hammer, and you got Hound of the Baskervilles versus Masks of Death, and one's a movie, and one looks like a TV movie. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we, I don't know. How many of you remember Top Secret when he does the old eyeball yeah. gag? Or the, yeah. uh, the uh, magnifying glass on the eye gag. Yep. So. Best scene in the movie. Which is totally doing a, a rip on all the Hammer films that he did. Where he would do it. I mean, that, that's so great, right? But yeah, I, yeah I, I've said so much about Cushing over the years. I don't know what And you know, I, I feel kind of bad. The actress in, in that top photo, the one who plays the Indian... Um, mm -hmm you know, servant and everything. I mean, that that's pretty problematic now. I mean, she's playing, she's playing an Indian, but she wasn't, she was, you know, they just put a little bit of makeup on her. Not as much as, as I remembered it. Oh my God. They just, it was blackface, but then I'm watching it here. It's like, she's almost as white as Peter Cushing, but she's playing the role and speaking in the way. And it's like, uh, you could have hired an Indian actress, but we have to remind ourselves that's totally unacceptable. Now, nobody would ever dream of doing it. Now it was, perfectly acceptable back in the day uh, it was worse than acceptable it was encouraged <laughs> especially yeah. uh well we don't need to get into all that uh let's talk about john hurt boing um, there he is yeah, the, yeah john hurt is an incredible actor uh, of course i think most horror fans remember him from alien but of course uh elephant man there um many other films but yeah uh I guess he got his start in the in the seventies, um, as most good actors do, right? So, yeah. Oh gosh, he's um, done so much. I'm looking at he's this done so much. Crazy. You know, it was after I put that photo in there, I was like, wait a minute, that's not alien, that's space oh, wow. balls. But then I'm like, oh, I'll keep it in, whatever. 
I said he gets started in the seventies. His first role was actually in nineteen sixty two. So wow, um, yeah. So he's done I, a, lo a lot of TV stuff in the sixties. Yeah, I don't. Was he a, was he a name actor when in nineteen seventy five? I was totally unfamiliar with him. No, I, I, I you know I'm trying to remember what made him. I mean, Midnight Express probably did it right, mm. and that was in seventy eight. Um, so that had to have been. Yeah. That had to have been it, right? Um, that's that's probably the one, and then uh, and then the elephant. I Claudius, was, which was a pretty. Oh, he was. I Claudius. Yeah. 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 He was. He was excellent. Caligula. He was Caligula. <laughs> he he um, was. Yeah, but that, that was, was. But that's still TV, though. Right. Right. Great. Right. Yeah, but it's British TV, so you know I, I remember when that was being shown in uh, in America, and that was a and big deal. It was a big deal. You watch it now, and it's it's again very low budget, but the acting is just so good. Um, but yeah, Midnight Express was uh, that was that's Oliver Stone, right? And Alan Parker. I mean, that was a huge deal, and he's a part of that. So. Now, did he? He wasn't he also? Didn't he also play Winston Smith in 1984 in the 1984 that came out in 1984? Yes, he did. The one, the one that feels like a music video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and a great oh, voice. Winston. You know, he, every now and then he would show up in um, animation too, just doing the Water voice. Watership down. Lord well, of the think, Rings. He's uh, Aragon. Yeah, lots of voices. Lots of voices. <laughs> in 78. In the, those animated series. That wasn't Cushing Winston Smith in. Yes, a BBC production in the 50s. yes, yeah, and and was excellent in it. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know if that one still exists. I've seen bits of it. I've it is. Uh, I saw it somewhere. I don't remember Daily Motion or some one of those websites I watched it from. I hear they're they're going to make a remake of uh, 1984, and um, I don't know if they'll do a good job or not. But it certainly seems, you know, 1984 came and everyone's like, ah, see. That stuff doesn't really happen. But now you look around and with social media and everything else, it's like, oh, we totally, totally are in danger. Just, of just, having just missed a year. Just missed a year. Yeah. Just off by a little tiny bit. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, Veronica Carlson, of course. Yay. Uh, who, I, you know, she was great in this role. I mean, she definitely proves that she could be a lead. Yeah. And, and she has the Janet Lee role of, you know, we think she's the... Uh, the woman, the person we're going to follow through this movie, and not so much. She seems to like. Did they drug her? Because she's always falling asleep sitting on the couch or a chair or something hmm. before she finally goes I, to bed. I think they did. Yeah, I think they did. I got the impression they did. Yeah, let's put it that way. I thought so too. Which again is, you know, why? Why is Peter so upset when what happens to her happens to her? Is like, um, you kind of set this up here. Yeah, but after I think this. The uh, maid servant, I think, was drugging him. Yeah, mm. but after this, she didn't work for two decades. Yeah, what she was sick of doing nude scenes. She said she every time she signed up for something, they'd ask her to do a nude scene, and um, yeah, they, in this one they did a nude shoot mm. uh, for an ad with her in a bathtub, but it wasn't <laughs> for, yeah. for the it ad. Wasn't, Oh, was it nude nude <laughs> that's hilarious it's it's one of my regrets i came so close to interviewing her at a convention yeah. and she passed away just before she came to america and, and was just raising a family and and then started doing these convention things i think she was a little surprised at that people still remembered and and really loved her and and because she worked with the great she worked with cushing she worked with christopher lee you know she had really good stories to tell um, was very entertaining. I've seen uh, I've seen a few interviews with her. I was preparing for it, and and very just seemed like a really sweet, nice lady. So I wish she were still with us. And she's very good in this. She really is. She's of of all the English twits that we have to you know that pass for our protagonists in this movie. She's the most interesting one, the most likable <laughs> one. Uh, well, I'm surprised you don't have a picture for it, but we should talk about Ian McCulloch. For all yeah, I meant English to. <laughs> what, what was that? What was that? 
Bill said of all the English twits that are the protagonists in these movies, you know, I'm like, oh. uh, what uh, I know about England largely came from when Monty Python showed up on uh, PBS, which I was there when America discovered Monty Python, and it was like a revelation. Yeah. I could not believe it. For one thing, I couldn't believe they had, you know, full frontal nudity on PBS. It's like, wow, where have you been all my life? Um, but there, you know, it was you just never so... saw Penny Hill before that. Oh my goodness. When, think... when uh, Bill, when I was in, in college, because it started when I was in college, if you went to a party, there would be a group of people that stopped everything at like, I, I think it was 10, 30 or 11 or something mm -hmm. in uh, Central Time and watched Monty Python over in the corner Yeah, and, and ignored the party. Yes, I, I think I was one of those people. And then the next day, Sunday, would be those same uh, nitwits getting together and reenacting as best we could remember <laughs> the routines from Monty Python and thinking that we were funny just by repeating the stuff they said. It was so it was so influential. It's just so mind-blowing. You know, you, you think comedy is just Carol Burnett, which was fine. Don't get me wrong. But then all of a sudden you see this and... It's just so surreal. It's like, okay, now now I'm a college student. I'm laughing at highbrow stuff like Monty Python. <laughs> I, I, I waited to do it with the with the young ones. The young ones was my my jam. But I like young, I like the, the goodies too. I mean the goodies. But then you find out these shows, these English shows that you love. It's like, man, I can't wait to get all the episodes. And you're like, well, there's seven of them. Uh, we English aren't really big on England's longest running show, 13 years, 12 episodes. And you're like, well, how, how is that even possible? <laughs> well, my, and Faulty Tower was one of my favorite as we yeah. as we digress even farther. But I think that's another one that has like 12 episodes. Right, you know? right. It's like famous, but. Uh... All right, uh, Ian McCulloch, let's go back to that. <laughs> yeah, okay. he was in Zombie. But he was in Zombie, yes. And yep, Zombie Holocaust yep. to make it even more confusing. Contamination as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, before this, he was in uh, I lost it, I Monster, which is a film we need to do sometime soon. Mm, do we? Yeah, I, that, that's actually one of the few hammers I haven't seen. Oh, there we go. I because it's not a I, I Monster because it's not a hammer film. Oh, whoops. Yep. He I'm, was I was in, thinking of the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. Never yes, mind. you are, but he was in it. The, the one with um, Roddy Pipe, Rod, Roddy Piper, Roddy, Roddy Piper, McHale. holy oh, cow, yes, yes. That's awesome. We did that was like our second episode of classic. Wow, hmm. that is a classic, or, or very early at any rate. <laughs> Joseph Perry, <laughs> I'm trying to see what I Monster who made I Monster. It's uh, it's a uh, what company did it? I'm looking real quick. Um, Amicus, that's an Amicus film, okay. There you go, doing the, the what everybody can't does. do. Hammer, do Amicus. <laughs> it's got Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, so come on. Uh, all right, um, I guess we need to talk about the ghoul himself. There's the picture from Star Wars. So well, if anybody was wondering who we were talking about, see it in the middle there. there. He is, yeah. Who I just found is. out has and there's the, the knife. Yeah, there's the knife, and that's the knife that gets stuck in the guy's head, right? And mm -hmm. Ian McCulloch's head, for that matter, right? Yep. Um, he uh. I didn't know that his Star Wars character had such a background. There's like so much of the books and the comics have a minute. So I was surprised to find that out today. So it yep. means nothing here. But there's your uh, green glow over his face. That was so mm. terrible. That was just so terrible. And then they and they have this weird um, soft focus kind of blurry thing over him. Like, you know, like when they were filming, um, what was it? june collins and dynasty toward the the end of its run where, you know, <laughs> they're shoving gauze in front of the camera well, yeah we don't weird. want anybody to think that uh eating dead hum flesh from dead humans is a, an attractive thing yeah no. so no but it's probably not going to make stores <laughs> break out all over your body <laughs> and turn green especially you know it, now if he were eating if you were actually eating dead bodies from the grave yeah i could see where that could take its toll because that's just nasty but um, they were he was getting them all he was getting them fresh and, and again maybe they should have established that. <laughs> they should have established that he was a ghoul and and you know peter would have to go off and dig up graves and stuff to bring back what he could find and everything but um but now he developed a taste for uh living 
humans. And that's, and that's why Peter was upset because it's one thing to dig. I mean, they're already dead. You know, they're not going to miss it. But, uh, but now, now people are dying because of his son and, and that's where, you know, finally has the break, but we didn't get any of that. I'm totally that. making this up. Yeah, you could say the same thing about necrophilia too, Bill. They're already dead. The love that cannot speak his name. <laughs> so senseless violence, you say. This senseless the violence. Pictures. So there's Ian McCulloch at the top, right? What's I didn't there? even recognize him. From all those pictures yeah, I saw, no. that that's basically the shot that I, I saw him with a big blade in his head. Now who he, he's not the, the guy in the middle picture, he was was he just in the beginning or is he is he the guy that goes over the cliff? Yes. He goes over the cliff. Okay. Okay. He's he doesn't make an impression at all. No. <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry, but I was like so we gotta remind ourselves what happened yeah. to him. Yeah. Well, except for when he's going Daphne. <laughs> Daphne. Next Daphne. time you're on a podcast with Daphne, you just I know, I know. I told you. I we will need to record say, that, put it as a ringtone or something. I, I will say I kind of enjoyed that opening gag because mm -hmm. it is a gag. It's just, it's a it's a. Uh, well, what was going on? Uh, oh, they were they, betting on whether or not she would she scream. Would scream. Because, yeah, uh, it was it was a joke on her, but it it was played out like she was entering a haunted house and you didn't know anything, and it was it was interesting. But I was like, why does this have to do with the ghoul? I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time we're but, just uh, a bunch of rich privileged twits and we have nothing yeah. better to do so we'll bet we'll do these elaborate scooby-doo gags and, and bet scooby -Doo. whether or not we can get the girls to scream the <laughs> oh. party attenders yes <laughs> lord bottom tooth the third bottom tooth the third <laughs> oh my goodness uh, what else do we want to say about this film holy cow what do we want to say? Beyond yay, Peter Cushing, yeah. It, well, you know, you had, uh, I mean, I know you read it off the card, but Anthony Hines was, wrote the screenplay. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of good stuff. I don't know Another if this is one of them. But... Key, key player. Roy Ashton was listed for uh, special effects. I suppose he, I don't know. Stuck the, the knife, knife in there. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna say he probably, he did that. Of course, he, he did... All the early uh, Hammer films, right? Mm -hmm. yep. so, um, and at this time, he, uh, he was doing not only The Ghoul, but he did uh, The Vault of Horror, The Creeping Flesh Asylum throughout the 70s. He was working, you know, ha he was even still doing Hands of Ripper. He was still doing Hammer films in the early 70s. Um, uh, let's see. I and, and okay, so, so Anthony Hines did actually write The Reptile. Which, and oh, apparently, maybe. apparently, this script hung out for a while too, right? Because there was, I, I was reading something uh, that in the '60s, it was supposed to be Boris Karloff was supposed to be in it. Oh well, so that's interesting because Boris Karloff also made a movie called The Ghouls, which is another one of those holy grails because it was literally a lost film mm. for a very long time, and and then they they found it. They found a pretty good copy of it somewhere. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, we were gonna do it one time, and we. I don't know what. Somebody picked it, but uh, the. I don't know. Changed their mind, I guess. There was, a, <laughs> there was a wretched, a crappy, garbage piece of junk copy that floated around for a while. And was pretty much the only way you could watch it. And then they they found a pristine copy sitting somewhere. It's like one of the best looking of all the lost films ever to be rediscovered. And they made a DVD release and everybody was just like salivating. And when they got the DVD, it turned out they had accidentally used the crap copy again. It was like, what? But I, I think in England they did make a, um, a better one. So it's, it is possible to see it. And He's also not very ghoulish in that movie. And when was this movie? Was this a 60s? 33, or was... 1933. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've seen that movie. Okay. I thought they were saying there was a 60s one. And I was like, so I was thinking like the Sorcerers and all these other ones that he yeah. made late in his career. Um, but yeah, the ghoul, um, I was trying to think of what the picture of it looks like. But that's the one where he, yeah, it, it's the one where he's kind of got the wrinkly face. Makeup. He's wrinkly and he's got yeah. dark circles under his eyes. It's like, yeah. yeah. Okay. I've seen that movie. 
scary for 33, I guess. But. Yeah. Somewhere. I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, all right. So let's let's go ahead and wrap this up because we got some feedback tonight. Do we? We, we yep. got a couple. Yep. All right. All right. Well, let's go okay. ahead and give our recommendation for this. And if you want to pick out a favorite scene or a highlight, go ahead and do it. Bill, oh. you are up oh. first. Well, I'm the one who picked it, so I guess. Um, do I recommend it? Sure. Come on. You got nothing better going on. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's 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 like it was toward the end. Things were changing. British horror was was dying. Hammer was dying and all. And this is just one of those last gasps. It's just a chance to see some of our, the classic horror actors, at least one of them, doing their stuff. But the writing's on the wall. It's it's not what it should be, but it, it's it's a it's a curious piece. It's definitely worth worth watching, worth seeking out, and all. Don't expect a whole lot. Don't expect a lot of ghoul because there's not enough ghoul in there. And, thank, um, thank God for William. It's Hurt. always in some ways it's weird. It is a weird um, film because it's it's old fashioned in the sense that not a lot happens, but then and, and it's, it's relatively bloodless. But then then all of a sudden there's a guy with a knife sticking out of his head, and it's one of the main people that you thought you know. So it it does have a curious um, nihilistic sense of, of you don't know who's going to live and who's going to die, and really only one person makes it out. But the, and it's got some great actors, but it just seems kind of slapped together. Like it, it does bother me. I don't know what happened to John Hurt, and I want to know what happened to John Hurt. It, Maybe one they could have just, well, supposedly they were they were <laughs> you know refusing to save. I, I think the idea was that he was saved, but uh, you know you got to tell me this or I'll yeah yeah you, you got to tell me this yeah. or I'm going to let you die. It's like okay, so we lured mm -hmm. that other girl into the house and then we killed her and fed her to a ghoul. Okay, help me out now. It's like yeah, screw you. Don't <laughs> walk away. I'd be throwing rocks at his head. <laughs> Point. Uh, Jeff, what about you, sir? Um, boy, I had a favorite scene that slipped. Oh, my favorite scene is going to be, and we, I, I think we talked about it a little bit, but the uh, where Peter Cushing is like, is he at an altar or something or praying? But he's he is distraught, his yes. face is contorted, he's crying. It, it, it was, it really hit me as something I had never seen from him not that i've seen all of his movies like as many as you guys have but uh um I, it really made an impression on me i thought that was great so you know this this you can live without seeing this movie but uh it's a, it's interesting in its own right mm -hmm. to a certain extent i mean i mean we got kevin francis producing dad's yeah directing um, Anthony Hines is writing, Peter Cushing is acting, John Hurt, Veronica Carlson. There's there's like uh hammer sprinkled all over the place here. Yeah. Peter uh, Yeah, it seems like it should be a surefire, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It does. But yeah, it's it's out there. So yeah, check it out. Uh I I watched that 90 minute version and I just I didn't nothing more was revealed. You yeah. know, it was 10 minutes longer and do you know Apparently where the was, 10 minutes was? <laughs> yeah, the 10 minutes was in the film. party. One of the few times that actually the, what the cuts were made sense. Yeah, you're always hoping. <laughs> you're always hoping when you hear, here's the extended version. It's like, oh, it's 10 minutes of wall-to-wall -wall ghoul action. And no, it's just the twits being twits for twi another twi 10 minutes. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, man. So I, okay, I'm a, I love Peter Cushing. So I, you know, if you are a Peter Cushing fan, you, of course you're going to watch this. If you're a gothic UK fan, you know, you like hammer films, you're, you know, you're into Amicus and you're into uh, Trigon and you're into Ty Tyburn as well. So uh, this is, this is very much one of the last UK gothic horror films of its time, um, be it hammer or not. Uh, it's, it's not a very eventful film, <laughs> but if you're in for, if you, if you're a fan of those, of the actors or the director or just the idea of, you know, British Gothic horror. It's, it's fine. It works. There's nothing, it's not poorly done. It just doesn't really raise the bar at all. It doesn't, it doesn't try to be better than anything. Right. It just tries to mm -hmm. do its job and be done and 
for the most part, it does that. Um, so yeah, go catch it. It's on Tubi. If you're interested, check it out. Let us know what you think of it. Uh, I, you know what I really enjoyed, and this this may speak ill of me, but um, it and that's when uh, John Hurt, who I called William Hurt earlier, that's an entirely different person, but John Hurt when he his character Tom Rawlings, who I have no idea why he's even here. Um, in the movie. I don't understand why he's on the property and what he's supposed mm. to be doing. It's not really explained. I guess he's the handyman, but why? Um, yeah. But anyway, he uh, he sneaks off to the car and the guy's in there sleeping, waiting for Veronica Carlson to return. And he, he's, he opens the door carefully, <laughs> grabs his coat, shoves the door yeah. and sends him off and the guy can't get out. Right? He's, he's, and he even tells, jump, jump! <laughs> and the guy can't do anything. It was just like, it was so. That, you, and then he laughed, but he laughed maniacally. After oh my god, it was that. so jump, jump. <laughs> yes. you, you know, you know, I'm I'm glad you pointed that because I totally forgot about that. And I remember watching and thinking, you know, he's sort of portraying a below average intelligence person here, but that's actually a slick move. <laughs> Brilliant. But, but I, I remember thinking, I guess it was a because it was a convertible. You would just leap out over the top. But hmm. the, my thought was, get out from the coach why not first, open man. the door? <laughs> You, could uh, you know, the listen, if, you open the, if the I wake is, up from a like good kind of slumber and I suddenly find myself in a car that's careening toward a cliff, I don't know if I'm really thinking straight there, okay. you know. Okay. I mean, I'm there's probably a hundred ways out of it, but you just, went, <laughs> you just went right over the end. And then they smashed that gorgeous car. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, well. There you go. <laughs> that's our review of The Ghoul. Uh, it's probably a film you haven't seen. I would imagine not many of our not other many people have. that are watching have seen this movie. Um, so uh, we, we may have enticed you to go check it out. Especially oh, if you're a as far hand away hand. as possible. Who knows? Yeah, let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. Uh, Jeff, you, you mentioned we might have some uh, feedback. We do. We do. Um let me cue it. We got a couple of things. One's uh, for 181, The Brotherhood of Satan, which just dropped today from Mikey Z. Mikey Z. Mikey Z. What we have here is a failure to distinguish one film <laughs> about satanic townsfolk from another. <laughs> what we have here. Another film I get confused with something else. First, I thought Creature from Black Lake was The Legend of Boggy Creek. And now The Brotherhood of Satan, I thought, was The Touch of Satan. Between these two and The Devil's Reign, I'm totally verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Brotherhood of Satan, saw this in the late 70s on a cable channel. Don't remember which one, but it seems like something I saw before. Should have been called The Strutherhood of Satan. I like uh, that. I like that. Very, uh, very somebody, good. Lady. Somebody's ahead of the uh, game. <laughs> great, perfor great performance as always by that stalwart character actor, along with L.Q. Jones and L.V. Moore. Moore also appeared in 1953 War of the Worlds, by the way. Yes, and I was ashamed of myself for not mentioning Oh, wow. That. Uh, okay. We did that uh, on Classic Era about a year ago, I think. Um, again, the plot seems similar to others around that same decade, although the idea of recruiting the young'uns to house the souls of the elderly is a nice touch of Satan. Hmm. There I go again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Referring back to that movie. Great podcast, guys. Keep up stellar work. Looking forward to what 2023 will bring forth from that gruesome and groovy decade. Perhaps more Michael Goth? Oh, there's, there's some Perhaps. out there to be found, yeah. Uh, th there was something else that I hit me later on. We were talking about evil children movies. And you know, I we mentioned uh, Village of the Dam, but the bad seed, oh, sure, uh, seed. which is not satanic in any way, and there's not a group of bad children, but yeah, all right. Uh, and here's one from Eric Baker on The Possessed, episode 180. We also read, read this on uh, Decades of War of the 1980s, so um, because there is kind of a crossover, Eric says, Okay, getting old moment. I already listened to this review, but just yesterday I was thinking, hey, wasn't the group group talking about doing a possession movie? I forgot, <laughs> I forgot if it was 70s or 80s I heard it on. So I was on Shudder today and saw Possession 1981 with Sam Neill and Isabella Johnny. Oh, hey, this could be it. So I watched it. Wow. 
that was an interesting two hours. <laughs> 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 definitely, definitely not what you yeah. expected if you were thinking what it was going to be our review. <laughs> right. Where's Harrison Ford? Uh, yeah, where was he? Weird, but good movie. Laugh out loud. You may want to take a look at it. And I think I commented uh, to him, but yeah, we did that about a year ago. Yep. About a year and a half ago, almost. Yep. It was in October. Uh, so yeah, people should watch that on that it just just dropped on shutter in january so get the whole yeah. family together make some jiffy pop no, no. popcorn and yeah. don't get the whole first, family first date movie. <laughs> no only those that are close to you don't bring the first family. first date movie i think oh yeah um, so that's uh, it for the feedback but hey folks come on give us feedback give us feedback. Uh, give feedback. Us. i want to go back to war of the worlds 1953 yes because, yes um i love the 50s horror sci-fi movies and one of my favorites, and I just bring it up randomly because it's news kind of stuff, but is them from 1954. Yes. And I love that giant ant movie. It's one of my favorites, absolutely of all time. And it's one that I've been clamoring, clamoring that this would be great for a remake. Uh, and they listened to you. And they listened. Uh, Michael Giacchino, who did the Werewolf by Night special. Okay. From Marvel, which was filmed in black and white, by the way, or at least some of it, most of it. Um, it has signed on to direct the uh, the remake this year. So, yes, I just wanted to share that. Wow, wow! I'm looking forward to some Is giant it, okay monster movie. Giant Do you have monster. a preference, practical or CGI on that? Uh, there are times when it needs to be CGI, but when it get the close ups of it, it better be practical. practical. And he did a lot of practical on the Werewolf by Night. One he thing did. I did realize was that the man thing. Which looked like it was CGI was yeah. actually well. Actually, uh, so that's awesome. They, they did create the whole thing, but Dirk Rogers, uh, we said something to him about it on Stranger in the Third Floor, and and he said they did a whole full thing, but they only used like a second or two of it, and mm -hmm. and, the, and the rest they, of CGI. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they did a good job with it then. Yeah, no, they but they did. There's he said there's a. Uh, I haven't tried to find it, but he said there was a leaked video online. Yeah, I saw of, that. Of uh, awesome. testing of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, we have a film for next week, Jeff. We do, but first I have to remind people: War of the Worlds, episode one twenty-five, on Classic Era, and oh, Dave nice. Dreher was our guest host on that. Mm. Nice. I love that movie too. So. Uh, yes, our next movie. Well, hmm, Chad's doing it to us again, and he's not here to take the heat. Mm. Uh, this is a movie called Pigs from 1973, also known as Daddy's Deadly Darling. Yeah. Uh, starring Jesse Vint. If you can Ooh. You guys remember Jesse Vint. Um, yes, I do. Uh, he plays Thank a sheriff, I think. But ah. okay. this may be, uh, I don't know. I just don't know. It may be a cut above Herschel Gordon Lewis or maybe... Okay. Have you guys seen this? I have not. I have never seen it, actually. I haven't seen it either. So if you flip through the pictures on IMDb, it's, uh, well, it looks really like, really like redneck horror. That's what it looks Redneck like. horror! Oh, my God. That's kind of awesome. Time for it. <laughs> and it is currently streaming on Plex. And let me double check what I had here. Classic, the classic horror, horror movie channel, channel. I believe. Nice. Oh, also Cult Picks. Or you can pay six bucks and watch it on Amazon. I'm not paying six bucks. Uh, yeah. So I, I would suggest you go to <laughs> Classic Core Movie Channel or Plex. As a... There you go. This will be an, an interesting because I, I have no. This Once... is one of the ones that I've either never knew about or just steered clear <laughs> of it for whatever reason. Well, let's let's sneak peek the uh, taglines. Once the pigs tasted blood, no one could control their hunger. I don't know if that will have so anything actually to do with the movie pig? or not. You just never know, do you? It's actually got pigs. Because the other title of it's Daddy's Deadly Darling. What the? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. All right. Well, this will be fun. So if anybody out there knows what or have seen pigs, then you, you know what we're in for. And you can check. Oh, a, a madman, a psycho killer, and mean cannibal pigs all together in the scariest film you'll ever see. Ever three seen. exclamation points so it's got to be it's, oh, which is highly is. inaccurate the pigs are not cannibals they're eating humans <laughs> we don't first, know 
Well, they, they might be, you know, they might be bacon. Other pigs. <laughs> they might be covered in bacon, human covered in bacon. Um, all right, guys. Let's uh thank you for joining me, Bill and Jeff. This was a lot of fun, yes. as always, because we love this decade. Uh, but thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. The ghoul, thanks. Yes, a good pick, Bill. Oh, thanks. Yeah, interesting pick. Good interesting pick. pick. Well, it was good. We're gonna have to have a talk. Let's yeah. go ahead and say a good night. Ghoul night. Good night. Ghoul night. You goober. Good night, everybody. <laughs>